Okay, now back to Windows Explorer and we can see our outputted text file now contains the date. Now this is pretty cool, so we can use our script to automatically append to our text file, but once the date changes, it will go ahead and create a new text file by itself with no prompting from us. Now you can also break this up a little bit as well if you like. If you don't happen to like the date shown as one big number, just come back to Notepad and between our percent percent %j, we'll just add an underscore, and our percent percent %k, we'll add another underscore. We'll save this and we'll go back to our command prompt, we'll rerun our script, and this time we can see the date has been broken up a little bit. So go out and try a few of these in your own time and find whichever you feel most comfortable with. Now another little trick regarding our date. Now I might point out this really isn't anything to do with shell scripting, it's just a notepad trick. Is simply this. Now the first thing I'm going to go and do here is just delete my append.txt file. We'll go back to notepad and I'm just going to add in a new line here to echo.log to append.txt. In fact I can delete all of this as well and I'll just save this. We'll go back here and we'll rerun our reader.bat. Now down the bottom here we can see our append.txt has appeared. Now what happens is .log appears at the top of our notepad file like we asked for, but at the bottom here we can see that the date and the time has been added to our script. So if we go and close notepad now, we are prompted do we want to save it, because this log, this .log, has modified our file. So I'll say yes to save the change, and then we'll go and open the file again, and again you can see that the date has been added. And of course if we close this again and say yes to save it, and we go and open it a third time, we'll see the time and date is added yet again. Now of course you can do this manually if you like. If you want to go and open up notepad and simply type in .log and just save it, we'll just save this one as note.txt and we'll close this down. If we go and open up note.txt again, you can see that the date has been put in there and it will do that obviously each time that we open it. Now again, this isn't a shell scripting thing as you've just seen, but it's a cool trick and it's great fun at parties. Now up until this point, we've only redirected our output to a text file, but we're not limited to just text files though. We could write out to an HTML file, or a CSV file if you like. Now outputting to a CSV file really isn't anything spectacular. Simply change .text to .csv and separate your echo statements with commas and away you go. So let's go and take a look at redirecting to an HTML file as you need a little bit of TLC to get it to work. Okay, so let's go back to Notepad. And what I'll do here is I'll just remove this part of our echo statement and we'll just change this to this is some text. And of course because we want to output our script here to an HTML file, we'll just append this to a file which we'll call html.html for argument's sake. All right. Now any of you that are currently listening to this video who know a thing or two about HTML is that HTML does require special formatting in the case of tags to identify things like headers and body text. Okay, so above our first real line here we'll add in another echo statement and this time we'll need to add in the word body enclosed in less than and greater than symbols and that'll identify to HTML that this is going to be the start of the body of our HTML file. Now again we will need to append this to our same file, so we'll add a double greater than symbol in here to our html.html file. Now we have a problem. You see, our shell script sees these less than and greater than tags as special characters which have special meanings in our script. So to tell our shell script to treat this as text and not an actual command, we'll need to use the caret symbol and you'll find the caret symbol above your number 6 key on your keyboard and we'll use that to escape out all these characters. So before our less than symbol, you hold down shift and hit the number 6 on your keyboard to insert the caret like we've just done there. And again, we'll need to do that right here before our greater than symbol. Now you will note that we do use the caret as an escape symbol before the character we want to escape and treat as regular text. So remember, the caret appears before the character you wish to escape. You got that? Cool. Now on our next line, I'm simply going to go and add in a new line again, and this time we need to add another echo statement which will simply define a heading in HTML. Again, we'll need to use the caret to escape out the less than and greater than symbols 
and redirect the output to our html.html file. So we'll add in a caret, followed by a less than symbol, and then use the symbol of h1 to identify a heading, followed by a caret to escape out our greater than symbol, and then of course we will append this to our html.html file. Now one thing to be aware of is that our echo statements here will all be forced onto one line as HTML won't treat them as separate lines. So to make this all look good, we need to force HTML to add in a carriage return or a line break. So we can do that by coming down here to our line of text. And after our echo statement, we'll add in a caret, followed by the less than symbol, followed by the characters br, which is the HTML code for a line break, and then we'll end this again with a caret and the greater than symbol. And at the bottom of our script, we'll need to tell HTML where our heading and our body text ends. So I'm just gonna paste this in here and right here before our less than and our H1, I'm going to add another caret followed by a slash. And then I'm gonna copy my body text here and I'm gonna paste that one in and I'll do exactly the same thing. We'll add in a caret to escape out our slash Okay, we're looking about ready to roll now. Geez, they say that carrots are good for your eyesight. All right, well, let's run with it and see what we got. So we'll run our script. We can see it has run successfully. There's our html.html file. And we open it up and we see this is some text. And straight away, you can see that our text is also written in a large heading font. And that's all there really is to it. Now, just remember that when you attempt to create your own, that you not only need to follow the rules of HTML here, but you need to use the caret to escape out any characters that your shell script will interpret as commands. So whether it's HTML or XML or some other language, all you need to do is dangle a caret in front of it and you'll be cooking with gas. Okay, we've looked at redirecting to a text file and to an HTML file, but did you know you can even redirect to null? Well, sure, you do now. Null, in case you didn't already know, is really nothing. It's a device called null, which is much like a trash can for the command shell. Now, when we redirect an output to null, you won't actually see it on the screen. So why is this useful? Well, A, because I said so and I'm the trainer, and B, because there'll be times that you wanna suppress output so that it's not shown on the screen or redirected to a text file. In other words, you want the command to run but to sneakily hide the output from prying eyes, perhaps even your own. So let's take a look at how this works. So from our command prompt, we can type in a simple command, let's say dir, and we'll just hit enter. Now this simply performs a directory listing of the current directory, which just happens to be my scripts directory. And of course, here you can see the output. But let's now go and hide our output. So we'll issue our dir command again, but this time we'll simply redirect the output to null. So to do this, we'll simply add our greater than symbol and then the word null. Now if we hit enter, the command runs, but we don't actually see anything. Okay, well let's try another command, a command that will fail because there's a little gotcha here to be aware of. So I'll type in net use, followed by an asterisk, followed by server name slash share name. Okay, now this command, if you don't already know it, will attempt to map a drive and use the next available drive letter that I have available on my computer. And that's what this asterisk here is for. And it will map to this server, followed by this share. Now on my network, this server and share is bogus. It doesn't exist, so we will get an error. All right, so let's run it. Okay, and as you can see, we get a system 67 error as it doesn't exist. All right, well, let's try it again, and this time we'll use null to suppress our output. So we'll add the greater than symbol followed by the word null, and we'll hit enter. Hmm, the output's still shown. So why is that? Well, I'll tell you, only because you asked so nicely. When we use null to suppress output, only successful output will be redirected to null. In this case, our command produced an error so we didn't suppress the output. So what we need to do is add the number two before our greater than symbol to tell the command that we want to send any error information to null. Now why not use one greater than? Why start at two greater than? Well, that's a good question. And there's a good answer. One greater than is already reserved 
for writing standard output to null. It's exactly the same as what we did before, so you don't need to actually use the one. The two on the other hand is used to redirect errors. Okay, well let's rerun this command and you'll see that the error information will be suppressed. And there you go. But what happens if we want to redirect to a text file instead of null? Do we still need that 2 in there? Yes we do, but don't take my word for it, let's test it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to copy this text here because I'm a little bit lazy and can't be bothered typing it in and we'll go back to our notepad here and I'm just going to paste that in there and we'll just save that and go back and rerun our script. Now again we get the error so we'll go back to our script again and this time we'll actually redirect this to a text file so we'll redirect to error.txt and we'll go back and we'll rerun our script another time. Okay and as you can see we still get our error but over here on the left we can see the error.txt was created so if we open that up we can see that it's blank. So I was right, and that's one nil to me by the way, so don't worry, I'll keep score. Anyway, so let's go back to our text file and we'll add in our number two again and we'll save this and we'll go back to our command prompt and rerun our script. Okay, our script's run and there's no mention of an error here, but let's go and open up our text file and here we can see the error has now been put into our text file. So remember, if you are looking for errors, you'll need to use the two greater than symbol when you want to redirect your output. All right, now just to complete this exercise, let's go and create another script that will use the two greater than that runs two commands. One will succeed and the other will error. Okay, so back in Notepad, I'm just gonna paste in my script here. So we're gonna use our typical echo off statement here, but here we're going to ping our local host and we're going to append this to a file called ping.txt. Now that should work just fine. Now our next command here is to do a net use, which we've seen before, uh, asterisk followed by our server name, share name, and then we'll also redirect that to ping.txt. So let's go and run that script. Okay, our script has finished and we can see this system67 error over here, but over here on the left we can see our ping.txt, so we'll open it up, and here we can see the result of our ping command, which obviously worked, but they'll notice that there isn't a sign of our net use command. Again, that's because it produced an error and the error message was suppressed. Now this is all well and good, but ordinarily you don't write a script expecting to get an error. Generally you write scripts expecting it to be successful. But errors can and do happen, so let's take a look at how to deal with the possibility of getting any errors. Now what we can do here if we go back to our notepad and after our redirection to our ping, what we'll do here is we'll add in a 2 followed by a greater than symbol and then use the ampersand 1 command. Now this ampersand 1 will be used to catch the successes. So in essence, what we're actually saying here is if the command produces an error, send it to ping.txt. And if the command is successful, send it to ping.txt. Now we'll just go and add the same on our second line here as well and I'll just remove that additional space that I put in here and we'll go and rerun our script. Okay, our script has finished and you'll notice that there isn't any errors here, so we'll go and open up our ping.txt. Okay, and if I just expand this here, we'll just ignore the first one here because that was from our original file. Our second one here does show the uh, successful ping and of course, here is our error information from our net use command. So remember, if it's at all possible to expect either an error or successful results to a command, or even both successes and errors within the same command, then you should use this method of the two greater than ampersand one to catch either of these in your output. Okay, in this video we've taken a detailed look at redirection. When you run a script, you'll almost always have some sort of output to deal with. Now whether the output is a success, a failure, something you want to keep or something you never want to see, now you'll know exactly what to do with it. In the next video, we'll talk about using loops. We'll see you there.